Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. So I've got something exciting that I want to show you, and it's this little guy right here. And you might ask yourself, what kind of doohickey is that? Well, I'll tell you what kind of doohickey it is. It actually goes on the spindle on your CNC, and it makes you an artist in a matter of minutes. By taking this Sharpie, taking this cap off, taking this little cap, by the way, it has a magnet in this end, and an opposing magnet in this cap, Put the little cap over top the Sharpie, pull the cap off the Sharpie, put it down into the tube, like so. Put the cap on, screw it down, easy peasy lemon squeezy. And now you've got tension, because of the magnets, on a piece of paper or whatever else you'd like to draw on. It's a pretty incredible little device. We made one earlier, I shouldn't say we, I should say the gentleman that makes these made one earlier. I helped him design it, but then he made these improvements with the magnets. He got rid of the spring which springs have a tendency to wear out, but the magnets don't. And you can change from color to color very simply. So also an insert, if you want to use the DeWalt, you take the insert out. If you want to use a Makita, you put the DeWalt, the insert back in. Now, what if you want to do a multiple color picture? Simple. He's actually made provisions for that as well. More earth magnets. The machine runs around. It does the first color that you ask it to. It'll ask for a tool change and stop. Pull this off, change out your marker to the different color, pop this back on, you don't lose X, Y, or Z, push go, and you've got yourself an artist in a matter of minutes with your CNC machine and some high quality software, such as, well, you know, my favorite, Carveco. So let's get on the computer, we'll pick a design, we'll find one that's a multicolor design, and we'll go back out to the shop that is the shop, and we'll draw you a picture, just like I'm an artist out of nowhere. Let's get on the computer. All right, so what I did was went to the Googler and I chose this image right here of this monarch butterfly. Now, my wife happens to be a fan of uh, blue and purple, so I'll probably change this to um, those two colors. It won't be orange, it'll be blue and purple, but let's go to Carveco now, I'll open that up. And you know what they say, go big or go home. So we're gonna go new model and we're gonna go 18 inches by 18 inches. I'm gonna put the origin in the center and we're going to click OK. We're going to switch to the 2D view up here on the 2D tab. And then we're going to bring our image in. We're going to right click on bitmaps over here, import, and we're going to look for the butterfly and it's right there. Now I have this set to fit in the scaling down here on the bottom. And if you click on that drop down, you can stretch it, which will distort the image. And I don't think you really want to do that. Fit will make it um, encompass your entire work surface area. So that's what we're going to do. Let's open it up. Oh, you got to select one first. Okay, select a butterfly. Wrong butterfly, orange butterfly. Open it up. Give it a minute to bring it in, and there it is. We're going to go up here to create the vectors, bitmap to vector. Click on that. We're going to reduce the colors. We're going to take it all the way down to three because we only need white, black, and orange. I'm not going to do this crazy fading in here. I don't think it's necessary. If you wanted to, you could, though. But I'm not going to get that complicated with this. So we're going to go down to three colors. Click Apply. Create the vectors. Close out the vector screen. I'm sorry, the bitmap to vector menu. Let's go up here on the right and click this light bulb which will shut off the bitmap so that you can see what we have. And we do indeed have the vectors. Now, whenever you do one of these things, whether it's for uh, the markers or a V-carve inlay or et cetera, you're gonna wanna adjust these images. You're gonna wanna inspect them for things that are just too small that won't work. And in this case, I can see three or four right off the bat that we need to get rid of. So if we zoom in, we're gonna click off of the vectors and you can see there's one right here, there's a little one right there, there's another one here. So we'll click on those and we'll simply delete them. Easy to do. And then you want to move around the image and just take a quick look and inspect and see if there's anything else that you might want to remove because it's just too tiny for the machine to work with. So if you click both buttons on your mouse, you can pull your image wherever you want it. And I don't really care for these two dots up here. I'm going to get rid of those as well. 
We're going to delete those. I'm going to zoom in because I don't like this. We're deleting that. There's not one on this side, so we're in good shape. All right, let's create some vectors. First thing I want to do is highlight the entire image. Try that again. We'll highlight the entire image. We're going to push shift on the keyboard and click just the outside border. And then we're going to group the internal vectors. That way when it comes back through so that we have to, to click on each end of these individual little icons, icons, individual vectors, we don't have to keep going through and picking all of them. All right, so now that we have our vectors here, it's simply creating V carves. And the first one we're going to do is the entire piece. And we're going to come up here to V carve. We're going to select a start depth of zero, a max depth of 0.04 in inches. And if you're in across the pond, that's 1.02 roughly millimeters. We're going to click to select a tool. This is the finishing tool. So in this case, we're going to go with a 90 degree V bit. I know it's not a V bit, but we're going to lie to the machine here. Select that. Let's open it one more time. We'll call it tool number two. Let's go down to the roughing tool. We'll click to select that. We'll do an eighth inch ball nose. That is more similar to what a Sharpie marker looks like. Select that. Click it once more and we'll call that tool number one. That's correct. Safe Z height is 0.1. That's fine in inches. And if you're in millimeters, you could lift a millimeter or two millimeters off of the surface. That's fine. Click to define the material is really not that important, but we're going to call it three quarters of an inch thick piece of paper. Click OK. Now let's calculate the, uh, the tool paths. Let's see what we get here. All right. Now, as you can see, everything here that's red will be the black outline when you go to the paper. Slide this over, close this out, shut off the tool paths again. And now you want the inside vectors only, so we'll click on any one of those to highlight them. And that's why we grouped them together, because we didn't want to have to go back through and keep clicking on each one of these little hearts all the way around in all the little circles. We're going to do a V-carve again. Start depth is zero, max depth is exactly the same, 0.04 or 1.02 millimeters. We're going to click to select a tool. Again, we're going back to the 90 degree V bit. Select that. Click it once more and let's change it to tool number three. Scrolling down, we'll click to select a roughing tool. We'll go back to the eighth inch. We'll select that. Let's click that once more. And I just made a mistake there. This will be tool number three. The finishing tool will be tool number four. Safe Z is correct again. Material thickness is correct. Calculate now. And as you can see, it's going to do all of the inside vectors and those will be whatever color you choose. So if you want an orange Monarch, which is correct, you'll choose an orange marker and put it in the device. If you want a blue, red, green, yellow, any other color, you'll put that color in the device. All right, we're good to go there. We'll save the tool paths, which we've all done before. But what I would recommend is saving the tool paths separately into separate files. So you'll click this here where it says save tool paths to separate files. And then you'll name the tool paths. You'll give it a name, Monarch Butterfly, and you'll save them. And it'll save each individual um, tool, tool path separately so that you can change tools. It'll stop. It'll be just like you're starting over again. Don't change the Z0, and we'll go over that when we go out to the shop. So let's head out to the shop that is the shop, and let's draw a butterfly on a CNC machine. All right, so we're out in the shop that is the shop, and the first thing that you'll need to do is obviously put the device on the CNC. So we'll bring that forward. <laughs> And we'll remove the dust shoe, the pawn CNC dust shoe, because obviously you're not going to make any dust. So we're going to take these arms off completely. That way, nothing gets bumped. There's nothing in the way. We'll set these guys aside once we have these off. 
You don't necessarily need to remove the bit that's in the spindle, but if you choose to, you can. But this is how this net works now. So we slide it over, slide it up, and just put it straight onto the machine like that. Now what I do is I'm down here on my knees, I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but I'm lining up the center line of this piece with the center line of the bit or the collet to that uh, screw, brush screw cover there. You're just trying to make sure that you're straight onto the device or onto the spindle. Once you are, you lock down the locking clamp on the other side. Very straightforward stuff. I guess I had that way open. Squeeze him down pretty good so that it doesn't go anywhere. Take this back off, take this out, put your Sharpie marker inside. Take your little magnet, Sharpie marker, cap off. Put the thing in the right way, Vernon. Cap in. Oop. Butterfingers today. And put this back together like so. This doesn't have to be, you don't have to kill this either. You just, till it stops, put this back on. And now we're going to roll the machine back out of the way and we'll get the paper on the top of here. Now what I use is a piece of, well, I believe this is called malamine. Malamine, I'm not sure exactly what it's called. Dry erase board. And I'll tape the paper to that, clamp that down onto the machine, and then we'll do the zeroing process. And luckily we're not chewing on anything or moving anything around. So clamping down the paper on the top of this is really minimal. We're just going to use blue tape to hold it in place once I put the paper on. And to give you an idea of what this thing can do before we do it, that little kitty cat up there on the wall was done with this CNC. So we're doing our best to ensure that it's flat. We don't want the ripples in it if we can avoid that, obviously. So I just keep pulling the ripples out and then putting the tape back down. We'll make sure that it stays flat. I'll put a little piece of tape maybe back there and maybe here. Not really concerned with being it too twisted, with it being too twisted, because the image will be in the center and then I can cut and square and do whatever kind of framework I want to do after that. Now I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up or not, but there's a little bitty crosshair I put in right here. I know we're doing 18 by 18, so I took the tape measure and I just laid it on there where I said, okay, I'm in inside the boundary of where I need to be. I put a little mark, turned it, and did the same thing there. It's nothing that precise when you're drawing on a piece of paper. We'll bring it over and I'll show you how we zero for center. Z, X, and Y. All right. Basically exactly the same as you would if you had a spinning tool in there. You're gonna drop this down, if I can get the machine to listen to me here. We're gonna drop this down. Stopping above the material, we're gonna get it into the center. Again, this isn't rocket science, that's just, just a basic center line is where I want it. We're gonna slow down the speed on the machine here a little bit so it doesn't continue to drop. Again, with a piece of paper, we're gonna put the paper under it, holding it flat, and just move it back and forth like this, dropping down one click at a time until it draws a line. Like so. There's your zero. One other point to be made, you don't need to turn your spindle on. It's a lot quieter when this thing is running. Let's see if we can make something here. You can actually hold a conversation in your shop when this is running and turning you into an artist.
And as you can see, he's designed it with a stop so that when it needs to move to the next vector, it can lift off the paper and then come back down and begin drawing again. Now I'm not going to make you sit and watch this entire thing in slow speed, but I just wanted to show you that it can lift and move from vector to vector without making a mark. It has enough down pressure to put the mark on the paper, and away we go. We'll do the black first, then we'll come back and do the blue. So a couple things I didn't mention inside, and one other thing that I'm going to add to this. Uh, inside, I didn't tell you the speed that we're running at. We're running at 100 inches a minute, just as if it was a normal quarter inch end mill. Secondly, I said that squaring up wasn't that important. I'm going to go back into the programming and I'm going to add a square to this, oh, roughly one or two inches off of the butterfly here now, and then I'll have it draw the square around and that'll give me somewhere I can cut it out with scissors and get a nice square that works in relation to the image on the paper. Thirdly, keep an eye on the drawing as the machine is, is going along. There's a lot of black in this and about right here, I think you can see it, I noticed that the Sharpie marker was running out of ink. So you'll pause the machine, take that marker out, put another black marker in. Now what I'll do here and here is by hand, I'll just gently touch them up. We've only run one tool path. We gotta go with number two. That'll be as if it's a V-carve and it'll go around one more time and sharpen everything up. We'll do that now and then we'll switch colors and rock and roll. As I said, we're not going to change Z. We're not gonna change X or Y. We're simply gonna push go on the machine Fingers crossed, and here it comes. Right on the money. Now this portion is 51 minutes long because I do have the uh, speed running the same as if it was a V-bit. I could speed it up but I don't want any jogging around or knocking around in there. So we're going to let it go for the 50 minutes and then we'll come back and pick up from there. I'm not going to let you watch that whole, or not going to make you watch that whole thing. Okay, we could stop right there. It's a pretty nice drawing, but let's put some color in this thing. And here's the color I'm going to use. And how do we know about this? Well, let's be careful and not mark up the thing. Take this off without moving anything. Open this up. Mr. Capers wants to be on camera here. He's trying to bark in the background. Let's take this and set it off of the image. Put the other color in. Put the cap in. Put this cap back on. Put it on the face. And go over and tell the machine to go. And that is all there is to it. I've got it already loaded. And we will tell it to run.
Now, I'm stuck with an artistic dilemma. I kind of like all those white highlights in there. Do I do the finishing passes? Because I'm sure it's going to take away those highlights for the most part. Or should I leave it the way it is and call it good? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you think I've earned it so far, give me a like, a share, and subscribe. But I think I've decided I'm going to go with it and I'm going to run the finishing passes. And fingers crossed, it still looks as pretty as it does here. Well, how about that now? So I did a thing off the camera. Let's see if anybody notices. If you noticed, put a comment down there. But all right, this is what we're left with. It did leave some of the highlights. But we got one more thing that we got to do is I told you I'm going to put a square around this so that I know what square is in relation to that there butterfly flutter by. So we'll do that now. There you have it, everyone. How to become an artist with a CNC machine. Now, here's a side-by-side -side of the older version and the new version. The only thing I see that he did wrong was right here. It's missing the signature Hinkle label or logo. So, other than that, an incredible piece. He's got the knob here now where it used to be an Allen head screw. This used to come out, and there was a spring in there, as I think you can probably see. A much, much better design, a huge improvement. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description below to that fellow's uh, Etsy account where you can actually pick up one of these devices. And also, you don't need dust collection while you're running them. The dust collection is superb. As always, I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give me a like, subscribe, and a share. As always, I'll catch you on the next one.